Hi everyone, thank you for joining us on our TNT today, coming to you from my sofa, and a big thanks to Jack and Diane. You've outdone yourself. Uh, they came to visit, and they've brought Tim Tams in just about all sorts of shapes and sizes and flavors. And what's this one? Mint dark chocolate. And we've got, uh, what's this one? I don't know, this would be original family pack. I mean, I've got to be eating Tim Tams until uh, the next century. And not only that, they brought uh, some Vegemite and some Marmite. Now, these are sort of similar products. They're these dark spreads that Australians like. And uh, I actually use this one, which lost its label. Uh, it's called Promite. So we've got Anzac Day coming up, a very special day for Australia. And uh, just as sort of a you're, daisy, you cannot eat the biscuits. Uh, we're going to have a, a taste test with Steve, Steve Ross, on Grumpy Old Men. And uh, we're going to have a taste test between these three. I'm sure he'll hate all of them. And uh, we'll decide which one is the best. Anyway, a lot of news to talk about today. Going to come and say hello, Daisy. Daisy, come on. Come here. This is Daisy, the, uh, the new member of the family. If you haven't already met her, I do have a lot of news to talk about, by the way. I'm sure some of you will be complaining. You're going to come and say hello? No. All right. Okay. She's a bit asleep. All right. Thanks, Daisy. No, no Tim Tams for you. No. Anyway, this is TNT. So a big thank you to uh, Jack and Diane. Um, your generosity knows no bounds. Appreciate you dropping in. Good to see you as well. Now, look, we do have a lot to talk about today. Let's get to this uh, first story. Doi Su Tep up in Chiang Mai in flames. And uh, this from Khao Son English. It was last night, Doi Su Tep, the most famous mountain visible from Chiang Mai City, is on fire. The fire clearly visible from the city broke out at 9.10 last night and at least 50 firefighters were trying to control the forest fire as of media time. A later report now from Thai PBS World, Doi Su Tep forest fire is now under control, according to the Chiang Mai governor. And he said that uh, three hours later, and this is at 20 past 12, the governor posted that 50 firefighters were dispatched and the fire is now 100% under control, while the damage assessment will be reported later during the day. Now, Doi Su Tep, uh, a famous mountain, but not the tallest mountain in Thailand. Uh, let's just find out a bit more. It's uh, a mountain west of Chiang Mai, 1,676 metres in elevation, one of the twin peaks of a granite mountain, and uh, that's the view from Chiang Mai looking up at the Doi Su Tep. I believe, just off the top of my head, that the tallest mountain is Doi Intanon. Anyway, I'm sure people will tell me if I'm wrong. Gives us a good chance to see what's happening up there in uh, northern Thailand, though. And uh, today, Chiang Mai on iqair.com uh, is the world's third most air-polluted city, with uh, Lahore and Kathmandu ahead of it. And you can see there that concentration of some of those purple spots, plenty of red and orange up there in northern Thailand. Just moving it a bit closer, I've underlined where Chiang Mai is there in that uh, northern Thailand area. And you can see just over the border in Myanmar, a whole lot of fires. And that would be contributing to a lot of the smoke problems in uh, Chiang Mai and northern Thailand today. So here we are in the middle of April and we're still having these problems with bad air pollution up in northern Thailand. Now at some stage over the next month or so the rains will probably start and that's going to make a significant change if uh, not because the winds will change as well round uh, to the southwest and blow a lot of the problems away. We go to Hua Hin now and Hua Hin today uh, the story, Belgian tourists brutally attacked in Hua Hin, friends seek justice. And a Belgian retiree was gravely injured in an unprovoked attack in Hua Hin over a week ago, according to officials and witnesses. And apologies if I get these pronunciations wrong, but a 63-year-old Jan from Rimst in the province of Limburg remains in a coma following the assault. The victim, identified as Jan, was attacked from behind while sitting on a sidewalk by a German national who is known to have been living in Hua Hin for some time and is associated uh, with a local martial arts club. Uh, 
And according to medical professionals, Jan underwent a 13-hour surgery to address multiple skull fractures and currently in a coma with an uncertain prognosis. And doctors have placed numerous plates in his face. And while the surgery was successful, they estimate it could be three to eight months before he might regain consciousness. And his condition is being carefully monitored with treatments aimed at reducing brain swelling. Now, uh, Jan's close friend, Danny Lemons, who's also from Reims and helped him uh, plan his trip, travelled to Thailand to assist with his care. And he explained how Jan had recently retired and was exploring the possibility of spending his retirement years in Hua Hin, which he found appealing for its affordability and lifestyle. And apparently Jan wasn't the only victim of this German attacker. And the German assailant, described by witnesses as confused and aggressive, reportedly continued to roam the area for hours after attacking Jan before eventually being apprehended by police. So this story's only surfaced because of the work of Mr. Danny Lemons, obviously contacting Hua Hin today. Uh, we probably wouldn't have heard about it otherwise. And I can imagine there's probably other people who are attacked and we never get to hear about the stories because, uh, well, people don't want to uh, perhaps get involved with the media or police for one reason or another. It's our daily TNT program. We've got up to Thursday, the 18th of April, Songkran in the rear view mirror, except in parts of Chiang Mai, I believe, and also around Pattaya, where the fun's all about to start again, Friday and Saturday, so I'm told. So good luck for those people that are still running around with uh, water pistols. Anyway, let's just check the other uh, seven days of danger. Very quickly, the other uh, horrific road toll. Songkran road accidents killed 243 people, and it notes that about 85% of the accidents involve motorcycles. Now, somebody uh, sent me a message yesterday, and they've done the maths and said, well, actually, the Songkran road deaths appear to be lower on a daily basis uh, than the rest of the year, and that might be right. I suppose it's just a matter of the way that uh, these deaths are reported, but perhaps all the additional scrutiny, apart from the additional traffic, maybe does contribute to a lower road toll rate. I mean, maybe we need this increased scrutiny on the roads, all throughout the year. Anyway, interesting that 85% of the accidents were involving motorbikes. Let's check the numbers. Road accidents killed 243 people, injured 1,837 during the six days of the Songkran Festival holiday, and there were 1,811 accidents. This is from April the 11th to the 16th. That was Tuesday. And that was the day when many workers returned uh, from their Songkran celebrations. And it says the northernmost province of Chiang Rai had the highest number of accidents, 71, and the highest death toll at 15. As to why northern Thailand would be contributing so much to the accidents and the fatalities during Songkran, I have no idea. Let's go to this story. And uh, reported initially in nationthailand.com, foreign couple filch one million baht gold bracelet. Filch, a word I'm really not aware of. Let's just check uh, the dictionary. And it says filch, pilfer or steal something, especially a thing of small value, in a casual way. Except this thing wasn't of small value. Let's go further. And police are hunting for an East Asian couple who used mobile phones to pull off the distraction theft of a 1 million baht gold bracelet under the eyes of staff at a prestigious Bangkok mall on Tuesday. And the bracelet was priced at 1.04 million baht, that's around about 28,000 US dollars, and had vanished under their eyes just minutes earlier. We'll find some more information from kowsodenglish.com. Chinese couple departs Thailand after stealing a diamond bracelet in just four minutes. Here's a photo of the couple. Now, one of the articles said they were well-dressed. I'm not quite sure if uh, I'd agree with that, but it shows the, uh, the Chinese suspect inside the Van Cleef and Appel store. And on the same day, they went to Sawanapum Airport. Anyway, let's see what happened. And a Chinese woman and man who stole a diamond and gold bracelet valued at 1.04 million baht from a downtown Bangkok uh, jewellery store have already left Thailand. 
They entered the store at 5.29pm. They left at 5.32pm, a total of four minutes. CCTV footage from the store shows the Chinese woman asking to try on the item, and while the staff were busy, she slipped it beneath her long-sleeved blouse and quickly fled. And then at 5.36, the couple boarded a uh, green-yellow Toyota taxi, arrived at the Chactorium Hotel in Petchabury within 10 minutes. Uh, a photo there of the actual gold bracelet. And then at 5.54, they caught another taxi to Sawanapum Airport. At 7.11pm, the two Chinese passengers passed through immigration at Sawanapum Airport to return to China. The incident took over two and a half hours to complete. Then the investigating police officer said, we will arrest and prosecute the two immediately if they return. Uh, they're not returning. Obviously, they've done quite well out of their four minutes in the store. Uh, interestingly, can the Thai police pursue them in China? I just uh, quickly checked. Currently, the following countries have extradition treaties with Thailand. Australia, Bangladesh, Belgium, Canada, Cambodia, China. So I've got a funny feeling that the Chinese police will be checking with these two people. Obviously, they know who they are and uh, their passenger names would be known by the airline. So I'm pretty sure they'll be easily tracked. I've got a funny feeling that uh, they might be getting a knock on the door from Chinese police soon. But uh, another story about some Chinese visitors, a bad story and a good story all in one, reported by nationthailand.com. Chinese man covers buffet bill after compatriots flee. And embarrassed by two of his compatriots' bad behaviour, a Chinese man came to a Bangkok buffet restaurant to pay a bill of 2,600 baht after a clip of two Chinese women fleeing without paying went viral on Chinese social media. The owner of a bout beef lava grill in Bangkok did not release the name of the man when he posted his picture uh, on his restaurant's Facebook page on Tuesday night. And after a clip of two Chinese women fleeing from the restaurant on April the 12th, instead of paying their bill of 2,696 baht, a good citizen of China came to the shop to pay it. The post said the Chinese man could speak a little Thai and recounted that a clip of the two women fleeing the shop went viral in China. The man said he was embarrassed by the behaviour of the two Chinese tourists. He said he didn't know them. And the post quoted the man as saying that he felt sorry for the loss of the restaurant, so he decided to pay the bill. And the footage showed the two Chinese women, one in a white dress, one in black, bolting from the shop to their parked car and speeding off. And the post pleaded with the two to come back to pay the bill or else staff in charge of overseeing their table would have to shoulder the cost. It seemed to be a bit of a common thing of staff looking after a table having to shoulder the cost if the, uh, the customers flee. Head to another story. This one from ThaiExaminer.com. Scammers plan to use SpaceX Starlink satellites in transnational scam network targeting Thailand with deception. And police say they've disrupted a call scammer gang that plan to use Elon Musk's Starlink satellite network to link it with telecommunications networks across the world, including the EU, UK and Asia. And police are still studying the find of hardware and data destined for the Golden Triangle area in Laos via Chiang Rai. However, they believe it was Chinese controlled and in transit from war torn Myanmar. It was staffed by Burmese, Thai, Lao, and Chinese personnel. And the discovery occurred after a parcel was posted from the UK to an address in Chiang Mai. It indicated that an extensive international scammer organisation may be on the move. The Starlink satellite network operated by SpaceX allows scam gangs to bypass cable connections to territorial telecommunications firms worldwide. And in short, it's previously been used by foreign militaries and governments to provide internet access through space. But in effect, the system allows operators to bypass normal telecommunications networks. And the discovery came after a recent move by the Royal Thai Police to sever cable connections between Sakao province and scammer gangs in Cambodia, just across the border from Thailand. And they were trying to do the same thing on the west side of the Thai border with Myanmar because the, uh, the scam gangs, they moved their 
casinos and their online operations right to the border. Uh, in that case, it was a river, and they were using the telecommunications towers just across uh, the river in Thailand. So a bit of James Bond going on there, uh, people using the, the new Starlink satellite network. Now let's go to this story now, and we head to Myanmar, speaking of which, this is some headlines from Irrawaddy.com. We start up there in the top left, uh, the junta leader's New Year address, it's time to pray for Myanmar. He's not wrong. Uh, Myanmar junta troops killed in southern Shan state. And uh, we'll go to that story about Aung San Suu Kyi in a moment. China ramps up pressure for Myanmar peace talks as junta loses more ground. The bishop's opening for a new UN approach to Myanmar. Julie Bishop, a former foreign minister in Thailand, now the special envoy uh, for the UN to we'll try and sort out this problem in Myanmar probably unsuccessfully like all the other special envoys and at least 80 Myanmar junta personnel flee to Bangladesh. Let's check uh, this story. Why has the Myanmar regime moved Suu Kyi to house arrest? And the regime has quietly moved Myanmar's detained former leader and Nobel laureate Do Aung San Suu Kyi to an undisclosed location to assume she's been moved to a house in Napidor, which is the capital of Myanmar. And they say since the weather is extremely hot, it's not only for Aung San Suu Kyi, for all those who need necessary precautions, especially elderly, elderly prisoners, we're working to protect them from heat stroke. Well, she spent so much of her life in detention and at the age of 78 you wonder if there's any gas left in the tank but uh, she has been moved and I think a lot of people see that as uh, some significant sort of move. Now am I going to have uh, this one for breakfast or this one or uh, this one Steve we're going to be doing a taste test so uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to uh, that. Anyway that's all we have for today's quick whip around of the main, main news stories from around Thailand. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and we'll do it all again tomorrow.